Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a little special stream today. We have a guest. Emmy Chung is joining Hi. us from Bungie. Hi. Uh, so we're here, we're going to talk We're gonna talk video games, we're going to talk video game design, we're going to play some retro classics at the same time. Uh, let me just full screen this so we can actually see the games that yeah. we're about to play. It's, uh, this is yes. painful for my old eyes. <laughs> but that's the funny thing, is that you were saying earlier, like, this is how we used to play games on a tiny screen. I know, I don't understand screen. how, we used to play, like, four player this oh, way, on these tiny screens, right? Yeah, and I don't know how we used to do that, but... Or we, we would put tape between and cardboard <laughs> so no one was screen looking. I have no idea how to make this bigger. I thought I, I, thought I made it bigger and I didn't. Uh, oh god. How so, how does, so they can't hear the music? They The music shouldn't give them too much feedback but I'll oh, find out crazy. I'll find out when uh, when this comes on. Yeah. Uh, let's flip this on and see the chat. Guys let us know if like there's a lot of feedback from the um, from the mm. game sound uh, otherwise and we'll turn it down otherwise they hear it fine. All right, awesome. Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, technology is technology. wonderful. <laughs> no, I don't understand. I don't understand the audio engineering on this. Yeah, but cool. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um. So I first before we get started, you're a game designer. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean? What do you do? Uh, really, it's changed a lot. It depends on the studio. Um. I think the best way to describe what game designers do is they ultimately care about how the player feels at the end of the day, what their behaviors look like. Um, so depending on what part of the project you're talking about, you might be responsible for more behaviors related to social dynamics or related to economics, or you might be responsible for how a player is supposed to feel when you know they pull the trigger. Um, it, it is a wide variety of things and it depends even on the scale of the company, right? And so what I did as a game designer on a 40 person team is totally different <laughs> from what I do now. Um, um, and it's it's funny because um, you talked about feel. Yeah. The companies you've worked for, I think Crystal Dynamics, yep. um, 2K, 2K Marin yep. or Bioshock. Yep. So the rich, so the Tomb Raider, um, Underworld and the Reboot. Yep. Uh, Bioshock 2, you yep. said, or Bioshock 1 and 2 or 2? Yep, 2, mostly two. on 2. Yep. So that's 2K Marin, right? Yep, 2K um, Marin, yeah. Uh, and then Bungie with Halo yep. and Destiny. Yep. Um, those companies were, have a really good have a really good mastery <laughs> of feel, I think, especially like Bungie. Yeah, I think I always sort of knew that I wanted to combine some sense of action because I really like action games. I like player control and feel. Mm -hmm. um, I also love the social aspect of games, and I love MMOs. So Destiny was sort of like the perfect <laughs> storm for me. Um, but it's you know earlier off camera we were talking about just you know Destiny and and Bungie's pedigree really when it comes to player feel. Um, I mean just the amount of sheer passion that the team has and I, I had worked on control systems and you know jump Lara's jump systems and uh, gunplay for Bioshock 2 and you know we we would spend six seven months working on like the the systems, right? Mm -hmm. And then coming to Bungie and realizing, holy crap, it's not just one person working on this or a small team, it's like 30 to 40 <laughs> people working on this for many years. And it just puts me to shame and realizing that there's these amazing game designers who understand feel just 10 times better than I do, right? And so they've really, you know, like, they've really humbled me and I've learned a lot from the people on our team. I mean, we're pro they're, the, the guys on that team are like some of the best in the world. The one thing that I really desperately want to know about game design, yeah. game feel, speaking of feel, yeah. like one of the, my, the most fun things I've played in a game this year is God of War when you recall yep. the axe yep. and that feel of it just like sla like when it yep. just slams into your yep. hand. Yep. How long, I can't even imagine how long yeah. that took them to just perfect that. Yeah, and I imagine it's changed a lot because, you know, back then, know, 15 years ago, a lot of feel really was somewhat of a split just between maybe one or two people and mm. now feel is everything from the animation sets to the riggers to the sound effects to the UI to th there's just mm -hmm. so many elements now that contributes to that feeling um, so it's that much more of an effort because then doing anything with a big team is harder mm -hmm. right so that's yeah that that, that I, I love that that's awesome I'm just gonna quickly check and chat yeah. and see. everything sounds good consumer behavior and game design uh, <laughs> people really love um, or not love, <laughs> or or are like pog champ, <laughs> or, or just like or just like freaked out about that. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, let's just start at Mario Kart because speaking oh, of good yeah, feel, speaking of good feel, <laughs> like this company knows good feel, right? Yeah, Nintendo, um, one of my no, favorites when it comes to player feel. Um, Action games. Um, Mario, well, Mario Odyssey. Like yeah, the oh my the capturing God. the like the. I drum. am obsessed with that game right now. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> How far have you got? Uh, so last Thanksgiving. I probably spent 
36 hours <laughs> almost straight. I mean, like maybe like three hour naps every once in a while just to play through that game. And I think I'm at 700 some stars and I have, I put it down for a couple, um, for a couple, for like basically the last year. And then so on the plane ride, <laughs> I started like going through that process again. And I had, there's this feeling of practicing that I haven't done since like my Counter-Strike days where I would do combos in a corner, mm -hmm. just trying to figure out how to make sure I can do the hat throws and whatnot. And I was just doing that because I'm trying to prep for uh, the final stages right now. <laughs> it's, it's, that, yeah. it's that like, um, like super long, super oh, long yeah. dive, hat throw, oh, yeah. super long dive, like combo that yep. just it makes you go so far. Yep. I love it when you go to the, you know, the, um, uh, Cooper Trooper races. Yep. And you know it's one of the early, one yep. of the earlier races, and you whip out like advanced like yep. techniques. And you're yep. like, haha. You're yep. like three minutes yep. behind me. <laughs> yep. The like the way that they build in that kind of accessibility, but depth. Yeah. Uh, I, again, you know better. How does that work? How do you, how do you manage to work, make it work for both? Sides? I mean, in terms of like mastery curves, right? Like there's the difficulty of the game and what you expect an average player to be able to do, and then building in. I mean, they do a lot of smart stuff in, in that game, right? Because a player who's average doesn't really need to do any of that stuff, right? But if you really want to get into it, then you can start racing other people, and then people are putting <laughs> crap all over the corners of the world, and I'm like, how the oh, hell the did balloon, you, the how the hell did you get there, right? Oh, the yeah. balloon, I hate, yeah. like, I love the balloon mode, and I hate the balloon mode, because like, yeah. oh, I'll pick the first balloon, it's right I'm next to me. I think I'm good at this game, and, and like, then I'm like, no, I'm not good at this game. <laughs> uh, 50 cc? Sure. Oh, you don't have an 150 unlocked. No, actually, that's a good point. How do how do I not have a 150 unlocked? You know why? You have to beat all because well, because yeah. no, because there's so many different versions of Mario Kart. And, like I've bought it so many times. That's true. I probably just haven't played this one. That's true. We can go 100 if you want. Sure. All right, <laughs> I mean, I haven't go. played this game in like. Uh, why don't we go 50 just to be safe? Maybe? Yeah, let's go 50 for the first one just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't kill both of us. I forget how to go. Even yeah, Juliana loves the balloon mode. Uh, oh yeah. In, in Mario Odyssey. Oh man, I can't. Let's see. I'm going classic Yoshi. Oh wait, what just happened? Except I don't remember which one is select. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, A? No. B. B. All right. Oh yeah, yeah B. Which is weird. Weird because, because usually select in yeah Japanese, Japanese games is usually A, a right? Yeah. <laughs> but B yeah. for this one. So B again. Uh, it's too bad. So Thomas, one of our one of our um, uh, our graphic designer, loves this game. Loves playing this game. Yeah. Somewhere he's on holiday right now and he's probably freaking out. He's like, <laughs> uh, start with the basics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're quick races. Yeah. Um, it's funny Holy how much crap classic. It's, <laughs> it's funny how much of a difference like <laughs> mode seven made to I'm racing games. I'm gonna embarrass myself in this game because oh, it's you been already so got a mushroom long. start. <laughs> oh god, no! You already got a mushroom start. I don't know what you're talking about? Let's see if I remember how to do anything in this game. <laughs> uh, the the um. It looks <laughs> like it. You're right behind. I like. Is this the one where you can actually like, like do? Hop to power slide. Yeah. yeah, you can hop to power slide in this. I don't remember. Oh, I tried to get nope. that. Oh. oh shoot! I almost <laughs> <laughs> almost ate it on that one. Yeah. Uh, this game. But the thing is, I can never quite master the power slide with Mario. So I just kind of tap the accelerator. No, I used to be. Well, okay. I say that I was just gonna say I used to be really good at this game, but then I realized my audi the audience that played this game was like <laughs> my cousins and I. <laughs> so. What? <Well>, yeah. <laughs> Before we had like other gamers, oh, I had that with um with Goldeneye. Yeah. Because I was by far the best of all my friends. Yeah. And then I went to university, and I'm yeah. like, oh wait, other people can play games too. Yes. <laughs> you think you're the oh only my like God, obsessive? This is just so embarrassing online. <laughs> you think? You're, you think oh, you're the only gotta obsessive? Use it here. Hey, you gotta use it. Man. <laughs> You gotta take advantage of the shortcuts. Yeah. Gotta take advantage of the shortcuts. Yeah. Oops, Luigi. Luigi. It's supposed to be my brother. So did Smack you play him. a lot of games with your siblings? Do you have siblings? Yeah, so I'm the oh, first shoot. I'm the first of five. Ooh. That, oh, shor God, that no. shortcut almost got you in the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm the first of five. Okay. Uh, so me, then three sisters, then my brother. Yeah. And my sisters love games, you play yeah. all the time. But I was the oldest. Yeah. So I used to beat them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so and I was the youngest of three, two older brothers, and I attribute almost all of my interest in games to them. And there's, I think I saw a stat somewhere where, like, I think they did a study in Australia where the asking women who are in tech, and 90% mm. of those women responded is because they have, they responded yes to having older brothers, mm. which is fascinating, right? So what games did you, what are the interesting games that you say you played? 
as a child. Yeah. Um, the first games, I mean, I was I was playing like text-based adventures. I was. Um, well, you've got a red shell. I know. Like, Somehow <laughs> I gotta. I'm just gonna hold on to this one because it's gonna give me bananas otherwise. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was playing a lot of, like, everything from Mario teaches typing, right? Because that was <laughs> what I was allowed in my house. Uh, and then, and then being on Neverwinter Nights on AOL, playing multi-user dungeons. Um, I was fascinated with the internet at the time, so IRC was a big part of my life. Oh, IRC. Um, I attribute IRC for the entirety of my journalism career. Yeah, yeah. Is it because of the people you met? The people oh, I met. Yeah. So, um, you know the old uh, EGM crew? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they used to hang out in an IRC channel. Uh, you know, Per Schneider of IGN used to yeah. be there. Uh, it was a really, really great group. Was it a gaming It was a gaming community? group. Yeah. It was a gaming community. Um, that Most of the members of which I still see when I go to Tokyo nowadays. Crap. Uh, I, I got stuck in that corner. <laughs> uh, most, of the game, most of the members I used to see when I go to Tokyo. Um, and, yeah, it was just, just being close to people who actually worked in games and knowing there yep. was some sort of professional future yep. and knowing that like I even as an amateur I could write about games yeah that really made a difference and that was awesome that was just great to get that experience and to do it um, um, so yeah IRC was great for us but I wasn't really a PC guy I was a console guy yeah hence EGM as well EGM yeah. was a console magazine um, uh, oh crap I used it at the wrong time ooh, wait where is it where is it where is it, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, like, so you know there's actually a trick with the red shells in this game. Um, the radar or whatever, the sensing that they yeah. use is based entirely on the plane, the yeah. flat plane. So if you jump, yeah. it throws them off. Right. Because you've left yep. the plane, so right. it's like, oh, yep. and, it, and it kind of, s I, I was very proud of myself figuring that out when I was like, <laughs> well, when I was like 10, I was like, yeah. oh, I know what to do. <laughs> of course, I didn't tell my friends. Yes. Like, because you can't. Um, so, didn't know about that game field, didn't realize game designers had teams dedicated for this. So cool, says yeah. Arbat. Why are most of the objects flat in this game, but some are 3D? I never played OG Mario Kart. Because, have you seen Star Fox? A, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, this is not an actual... I mean, there aren't 3D rendering here. It's a lot of... Yeah, this was way before yeah. any of that stuff. Way before any of that I stuff. I mean, it's basically a character that is rotating in front of a camera, mm -hmm. right? And the world is actually rendered behind it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, not it's, a like, it's like one flat world yeah. that rotates as yep. opposed to... But it's amazing at how much of a difference that... I got it. Now I got it. Oh, you can do the shortcut. You can do the ultimate oh shortcut. God, no, I'm not going to do it. I can't. You have to. I you can't have for anything in this game. It's here where I am. Straight. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Oh, my God. But it was worth it. Yeah. It was totally worth it. Um. Yeah, yeah. This is a... But Mario Kart 64 was the same. Oh, my gosh. Mario Kart 64 had... um. Mushroom. Uh, Mario Kart 64 had the same thing, right? It had the, uh, it still had sprites, I think. Instead oh, of crap! Can I make it? Oh my gosh! Oh no! You need, you need a. Yeah, I need a coin. Okay, now I've got something really risky. I've got a mushroom, so you can also do the shortcut with a mushroom yeah. if you get it just. Oh, I did it! Oh, oh no! Nice. <laughs> <I fell. laughs> uh, yeah, Arvad. So this game is just really old. Polygons weren't. Oh. Really, I mean, they were a thing on SNES if you had the Super FX chip. Yeah. But yeah. not really a thing. Um, so when did you, how did you become a game designer? Gosh, I'm trying to have like a serious conversation <laughs> while I'm playing this game. is insane. Like I'm, it's testing me. It's really... <laughs> I, I I'm clearly distracting you. Um, I... I will ask you a deep question now while you're coming around that I corner. didn't know that I wanted to make games. I think a lot of, I've seen... A lot of game designers I've met have known they've wanted to make games since they was really, they were really little. Um, for me, I mean, I was I grew up in North America as a Korean American, and that means that my parents, as children of immigrants, right, they wanted me to. Uh, oh my gosh! Well, on the oh line. my gosh! I, on I the think line. I dropped that one too. Oh, no. um, they wanted me to be a doctor or lawyer, mm -hmm. right? And as the third kid and my brothers went into tech. I think they were like, "Okay, you're the last, <laughs> last, uh, you know, last one who has a chance." Um, and so I pretty much accepted that I was going to do some kind of medicine field. Um, it was just like kind of honoring the family. Um, they did a lot to, you know, help the family really mm -hmm. make it right. Um, and 
somewhere along the line, I mean, I've been, I had like this double life going on mm -hmm. where in daytime I was prepping for med school in a lot of ways. Like everything that I was doing for school, for college, was prepping for mm -hmm. this inevitability. But <laughs> in my home life, I was playing games, I was leading guilds, I was, and my parents were sort of like, man, she's spending a lot of screen time, but I was like not athletic, I was like not really popular in school. Uh, but I was fascinated with the internet, I was constantly in, on screens, but my parents were sort of like, as long as you get good grades, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna take that away from you. Um, who knows how, why they thought that that was the right thing, but you know, I became the way I was. But but, it's because they were open enough I, to that. I guess so, right? Um, but around that, I was having this double life. I was passionate about finding, because of what was happening in real life, uh, I was really passionate about finding communities of people online. And then when I started meeting people online who were like me, and just like not fitting in in school, but like was weirdly into, I was into K-pop at the time, which was, you know, 25 years. <laughs> it doesn't seem weird now, but, but it was then, really yeah. weird back then, right? Like, uh, I mean, so J-pop was barely a thing 25 years yeah, ago. Yeah, so. I was super into it, found it on IRC communities, um, then finding people there, then they were starting to game online. And so falling in love with just the online communities and feeling like here are these friends that I've been to their weddings. Like these are some of the best friends of mine. Um, and then somewhere along the line of college, I met a couple of professors who sort of pivoted my life in some very important ways. Um, and there's Randy Pausch, who is the guy who wrote the last lecture. He spent the last year of his life when he had pancreatic cancer, t sort of talking about his mission was to describe doing something that you love, that you're passionate about, that makes a difference mm -hmm. in the world. And his passion was about getting women into tech. And I didn't. I didn't necessarily have that passion, but he made me think about like, what am I really passionate about? And it was like, holy crap, my whole entire childhood, my whole self-identity, my understanding of my, my relationship with my brothers comes from playing games, mm -hmm. right? Comes from playing games. And so I think a lot about how I was probably very many of my male friends first female gamer friend mm -hmm. and my first, you know, my first uh, gay friend I met online, my first black friend I met online. Um, and so it was just this fascinating amalgam of things all happening at the same time and realizing this internet thing was a really beautiful thing and games was this beautiful thing. And I didn't know people made games. Like I, I like conceptually knew that games were being produced, <laughs> but I didn't think, oh, it was possible for me to make games. And so I, that was the year that I was supposed to start med school, right? And then I didn't go <laughs> and my parents were pissed for about 10 years at me. Um, and I was like, I need to make games. That's like my mission. I have to help people who feel like they don't fit in find a community of people that they feel like they can fit into. Um, so that's, that's been my like sort of journey into games. And so working on whatever I could at the time mm -hmm. and then making my way towards games that really sort of speak to my values. So just to, just to recap, yeah. we're here with Emmy Chung from Bungie. Uh, she's joining us, a special guest on Twitch, while we play some games. Just yeah. talk about games and game design, because you yeah. are a game designer. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, actually, because you're... I see so many parallels in your path to mine, yeah, because, yeah. again, Asian kid, yeah. Asian family, so my thing yeah. was all, you go into business. So yeah. I studied I studied business studies and accounting yeah. at school. And anyone yeah. who knows me now is like, you did accounting? What the hell, <laughs> right? Even my wife yeah. is like that, like, I can't imagine doing accounting. Yeah. I thought I had to, though. Yeah. Um, but on the side, since I've been since I was 14, I was yeah. writing about video games. Yeah. I was writing about, like, N64 games coming up yep. and things like that, and I just I never conceived that it was a career. I yes. didn't even I didn't even conceive like even what I was doing and getting paid for. I was like, yeah, but this is not a long term career. Yeah. Everyone in this industry yeah. is super young, and they yeah. go to somewhere else. They don't yeah. do anything anymore. So I didn't think that was a thing. I thought I had to go to university to do business. So I yep. went to university to do business, and I dropped out after a year yep. because I was just so depressed and yep. just not liking it. But I was also having a lot of fun writing about games. Yeah, I think like my one of my best memories of university was the morning where I was like, I can't be all the other class, I'm staying in, I'm just gonna sleep in. So I slept in, I got a knock at the door and Sega had sent me a review Dreamcast uh -huh. and 18 games. Yeah. And I remember just sitting there on the bed with like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like Christmas. I have 18 new Dreamcast games. Why am I going to school? Like, yeah. Look at all this. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I have the same, like the same, when I was playing Counter-Strike, and this was like 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 days, uh, I was playing it so much, I was thinking about, man, if it was only possible for me to go pro, <laughs> right? And it was like, pros were making $1,000 a year, if lucky, right, mm -hmm. at the time. And I remember being so passionate about 
this was the future, but no one really understood it yet, because mm -hmm. it was still a stigma to play games, let alone do it as a career, right? And then, like, to, we, you know, fast forward <laughs> to today, and I'm like, oh, damn it, I was right, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, the, it's as much timing as anything else, yeah, right? And yeah. I'm just putting it back, waking it up again. It's as much timing as anything else. Yeah. And that's, it's nothing we could have done back in the yeah, day, right? I, Which, yes. let me just see if there's any good comments. Oh my god, I did accounting. I told you. <laughs> like, like, I told you. No, how did your parents allow you to do all that? Reddit is our real home where we all belong. Um, so, yeah, how did your parents... Like, my parents were furious when I yes, dropped out. Also because I didn't tell them for three years. Oh, okay. No, I did. My parents were furious. Oh, you're, but, you're a much better kid than but I was. <laughs> I have two older brothers. You are the oldest child, right? And so there's a little bit different. Like, my brother saved me. They made it possible for me mm. because they were like, let her... Just she'll be fine, you know. <laughs> I like, I still owe them my whole career, really. That's great. No, no, that that's that's awesome. What do they do? Are they in games? Are they in no? Games? Or are, they, like, are they good Asian kids? Yeah, good Asian kids. <laughs> 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 Although the funny thing is, once I once I was established in games, my brothers are both like, maybe we should have gone into <laughs> something, you know, like something that they actually wanted. Maybe we should have done that. Yeah. Uh, no, that 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 it's always really cool finding those meandering paths. Yeah. At the same time, being someone who took a meandering path, I'm always fascinated. People are like, I wanted to be X, so I, from the age of five, I executed that plan. I'm yeah. Like, wow. I, I mean, most like, of the people that I work with are of that mind, right? Like they played games since they were tiny, and they were like, I want to make games for my entire life. It's really funny when I think back to my childhood. It's like you would have said it's really obvious she was going to get into games, but it wasn't mm -hmm. to me, right? Like. I was player number three, and so that means for NES and SNES, like I could never really play unless we got multi tap or something. <laughs> but for when we were playing any games, I would be the one on the side not getting to play, and so instead I would draw levels and write the maps, right, for everything. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Right, because I was like, obsessed with the idea of how games were made, even though it, it didn't occur to me that that's what I was what I was doing, right? Well, yeah, again, it's the same thing for me, but in the other sense, yeah. where I used to make mock newspapers and right. mock like websites and so just because I always had to tell I wanted to tell stories yeah and so it made sense for me to start telling stories about things yeah like games. yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Uh, yeah. round four yeah round four uh, we, we can you can do it you can do it, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> this is like shameful but this one's the best because the computer is really bad at this yeah. track. Yeah. Like, I don't know why, but the computer is, like, really bad at all the castle tracks. Well, so you can, it's 50cc, so they're being real nice to us right now. But you can lap all of them on this track. Mm -hmm. Like, on the other tracks, oh, you can lap, like, a couple. Here you can lap all of them. It's great. I love it. <laughs> but this is a nice close one, too, especially because this is such a slippy, slippy... Um, I love, like, again... Oh, that was really close. I love the different textures of the tracks as well. Oh, yeah. Because, again, it's all just a flat plane, right? You yeah. have no concept for that, but you you can feel it. And, again, I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into something like this. Like, to make it just work. Yeah, I mean, these, these games always blow my mind because thinking about, like, the practical side of uh, memory and how art works. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, games today, we could be so much more... Uh, What's well, the right word? Uh, abundant with how we use our memory. Well, does this does this game fit ah! like a texture on Destiny? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that bit of wall there. Yeah, yeah. That's equal to the whole of Mario. So Kart. it's really fun to go back and play retro games and see like where did they cut costs? <laughs> well, right. It's that classic thing which always blows my mind that I never didn't realize for how did years. They give me a red shell. That seems a little RNG. Well, they changed the balance, right? Oh, did they? Well, no, I mean the later Mario Karts. I mean. Uh, what? Yeah, because you don't get red shells in first anymore, right? Well, no, I don't remember you getting this in even the first Mario Kart. Oh no, no, you you got you got red shells. Oh, yeah. oh wow, my memory is um, so it was like more true RNG. <laughs> Actual RNG. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I um. Ah! Was that mine? I don't know. <laughs> um, I forgot. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is also the before they started doing blue uh, shells. No, I was just going to say, they they would put the red shell on a projectile path. Mm. This is like, you actually, it just curves to them. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, so it doesn't properly <laughs> yeah. follow them, it just sort yeah. of... I forgot about that. Juliana wants to convince her boyfriend to make games now. So you're, yeah. ins you're already inspiring <laughs> people in the chat, which is great. Um, yeah, I love Mario Kart. I, I love Mario Kart a little too much, I think. 
basically. Um, my friends and I, like, I, the thing I love about this Mario Kart over the others is that this one is more about racing than the others. The others became more party, party battle, games, which yeah. I'm still uh -huh. down with. I still think it's yeah. cool. It's just yeah. a very different mix. Yeah. I like both, yeah. but they've never really done this again. That's afterwards. probably true. Although I think the most competitive one was probably the DS version. Mm, the DS one was yeah. great. That one was really, yeah. really good. Had that really great Mario 3 track with the airship as well. Yep. yep. I love I love that <laughs> Oh, that's the thing. There's so many. I know you. I know you make a game as a service, but I'm really a big fan of just like a boxed game. Yeah, anyway. I mean, but a, if you made a it. Mario Kart as a service with all the tracks and continually pumped out tracks, yeah, I'd do that. Like I. Yeah, like, that's I'd, interesting. <laughs> like, I'd do that. Give that idea to. I'm sure Nintendo's thinking about it. Or, or, I mean, or like you know, Smash Brothers Ultimate, but Mario like Mario yeah, Kart Ultimate totally. with every track and every totally. character. Yeah, I would do that. Um, it's, oh, sorry. I was gonna say like the the ultimate like example about like not cutting costs about like um, efficiency is in Super Mario Brothers. That the clouds oh, yeah. and the bushes uh -huh. are the same. Yeah. And I remember like I played Super yeah. Mario Brothers for like thirty years before I realized the clouds and the bushes are the same. <laughs> like, the same. I, I remember that meme going around and people being like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen?" Yeah. Um, do you want to finish this in my Super Mario World? Yeah. Yeah. We can, then we can do like a one talks, one plays, sure. one plus one because that's. So that I can't, I can't we can be a little more interesting start. as opposed to people watching us fail at video games. I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, people also like watching us fail at video games. You yeah. Can ask, you can ask um, uh, Josh, who you met earlier. Yeah. Um, we used ah! to play so new Super Mario Brothers on Wii. A couple of Wii games came out for the Nvidia Shield, but oh only in China. Oh my gosh! I'm so scared. Oh no! How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> on the right side, 50 cc. Okay. Um, but the NVIDIA Shield has a lot of Wii games in China, uh, including yeah. New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Uh, so, uh, like, officially licensed, not pirated, officially licensed. So we, um, oh, of course, in this one, you can, you know, you can bop the uh, pipes out of the way. Oh, yeah. With your star. Yeah, it's great. Um, oh, my gosh, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so bad. Just as you caught up, too. Yeah. Um, so Josh is playing New Super Mario Bros. Wii with us, and he's really not very good at it. And he blames the fact that he grew up in China for it. Oh, yeah. wait, why? He's like, oh, because we didn't play Mario when I was younger. Oh, I'm not yeah, used to this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever, man. Like, Dude, <laughs> you it's can learn. amazing. I used to think I was pretty decent at, you know, like GoldenEye, like we talked about. <laughs> and then I try to play it now. And I'm like, how did I do this? <laughs> of course, the funny thing is, like, you and I are significantly older than our audience because yeah. they're sitting there going, GoldenEye? I think I've heard of this movie. Oh, it's my gosh, point. right? Um, or like I, I should have explained IRC. I don't think any of you guys know what IRC is. It's like Discord, yeah. <laughs> 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 except no ability to add actually images and well, it's like you know, Discord like right. Or... Yeah, it's like Discord right down to the like uh, yeah. hashtags and everything. No, right? totally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're I... right. Actually, it really is like Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> this is so. I'm so embarrassed right now. This well, is... it's okay. Josh is freaking out. Josh is like. It's not whatever, man. It's the truth. <laughs> uh, this track overlaps and you're jumping over the track is on a single plane. How do you see that? I don't know how you do that from a programming perspective. I have no idea. <laughs> but I'm just going to go with their wizards. Yeah, I mean, I can probably think about how it... I mean, th this when it was programming for these days, it was so different because you're doing a lot of direct calls to the chip, right? Mm -hmm. It's different from doing something through a compiler so i i have no concept of how <laughs> programming was done for well this is all like to the metal right yeah yeah um which you had had to be again when yeah oh this is <laughs> at least i made it to the podium <laughs> but also, but also of course, i mean remember how this used to blow our minds the uh wait for it wait for it wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> oh my god scaling and rotation yeah. how does that even work <laughs> like that yeah. like you guys don't realize how much effects like that blew our minds back in the day like yeah. things like rotating and like popping out like um contra 3 when the oh, plane yeah. flies in oh yeah that's like a total like when <laughs> Star Fox came out it was like <laughs> mario 64 was a really funny experience for me because i'm my, gonna you back know, out this my one. siblings and i were really into mario mm -hmm. like every other child at the time <laughs> um and i remember my brother coming home from school and saying like he heard the news that mario 64 was gonna be 3d and i remember being like what <laughs> How does that work? It's you not could possible. just like walk around the pipes, right? Like, it, like you walk around the holes. How does that work? And, and then when it came out, I was like, oh, I understand. That's like, 
<laughs> that's why I love it. Like the Mario series is split in so many ways yeah. because you have like the more linear ones like Galaxy. Yeah. And I love Galaxy. It's great. And then you have like the open world ones like Odyssey yeah. and 64. Yeah. Um, and I, I love Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. Odyssey. Like this, by the way. So for 26 years, 27 years, 26 years, whatever. I used to say that this was my favorite game of all time. Of all time. And then Breath of the Wild came out. Oh, yeah. Like. Yeah. So it's interesting because Breath of the Wild is not my favorite. It's not my favorite Zelda actually by kind of a margin. Uh, but as a game designer, I look at it and say it's one of the best design mm. games I've ever played. Right. Which is like a really weird concept to me to actually split my brain <laughs> like that. Um, because there are so many things in that that I'm like, how did this get made? I don't actually understand conceptually as a team, how did this vision get wholesale bought in by everyone and everything fits together in this, like, nothing feels out of place, mm -hmm. right? Everything feels really intentional and that's so hard at scale. Um, versus, yeah. you know, like... Again, it's feel, right? Everything yeah. just feels right. Even yep. though so many of the things are not Zelda, Yes. They're not Zelda ideas. Yes. They're not Zelda yeah. in elements, but yet they, it works. Yeah. I don't know how they did that. Yeah. I, so I know, um, you know, Seventeen Bit, the guys that did Galaxy yep. and uh, Skulls of the Shogun. So yeah. I know Jake. Yeah. 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 So I was talking to Jake about it, and he was just like, "I don't get it. They've never done open. They've never done like an open world yeah. like RPG like this before. And the first try, and they nail it. What the <laughs> hell? What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> yeah. Um, but." Talking about like teams and design, so you're saying it's really changed in terms of going from a 30 person team on Tomb Raider, yeah, to like a was it 700 on Destiny? It, I mean, it wasn't at the beginning, mm -hmm. it was when we launched, it was 200 or so, I think. <laughs> we it's have, still a big we have, jump. Like, we have from 30. in the studio, but not everyone works exactly on the same thing at the same time. Um, and there's a lot of staff who don't who do different things just across the board, not mm -hmm. everyone's like a content creator. Um, but yeah, like the team's team is just bigger because the game is bigger, has a ton of expansions, has a bunch of services, has a bunch of community management side. There's a lot of things that go through go through the process of making Destiny work. So the first question is though, how is it for you in terms of building a game that is never really done? Because uh. you know, it's not, it's not like it's not like with like Tomb Raider, you finish the game, maybe you did a couple DLCs yeah. after, but you finish the game, you shipped it, and then it's like cool next thing whereas destiny the next thing is always still there's a there's like the good and bad right like the the great thing about working on a box product was the feeling of this euphoria euphoria around like oh my gosh sir, we're putting this you know baby into the world and oh we're, we're trying to see how people react to it um, but there's like a there's like a product side that's like okay you're you're finished and let's see how people experience it and but you have this regret of like it was nothing ever you ever make is ever what you thought you were going mm -hmm. to make. Like there's not a single game designer who was like, "Did is this game exactly what you had in mind?" And they would they'd be like, "No way! This is like 10% of what we envisioned, right?" Or it's a totally different game from mm -hmm. what we started with. Um, and so, from that perspective, live games are great because you're like you know you could always continue to shape it and change it, and it's mm -hmm. more fun because you're sort of interacting with the community as because you're partners in this world creation. Um, but it's also hard because it you're never done, mm -hmm. right? You're working, I mean, like I'm working in the office and then I'm reading about how the community is acting and then we, I'm playing the game and it's like, it's just a constant, you're living it all the time. And so that can get really tiresome for a lot of people just from a development practice standpoint. Um, but Also it, when you're just not used to that type of Yeah, of it's, a, it's definitely a transition and it's not for everyone, but like I love it because you know, I love community games and since that's like my passion, um, it's, but it's not, it's, it, you, you having worked on both, there are pros and cons, mm -hmm. right? And you sort of take what you, you feel like you want in terms of your values. Well, you're right also about like the feedback bit, about yeah. like, getting that feedback. It's so, it, that's so cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool to be able to yeah. like hear people say, yeah, I wish... X could be like this and then actually <laughs> be able to act on it as opposed to, oh, damn, that was a really good idea. I wish you thought of that. So, so civil, just like that. That's exactly how they... <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, gamers are known for expressing yeah. their views yeah. in such a thoughtful and yeah. like uh, uh, easy manner. Yes. <laughs> um, so a couple questions here from the... Yeah. How did you evolve from a game player to a game designer? Did you go to school to learn how to make games after you decided you wanted to make games? Um, so I... I like this. That's like a really complicated question because there's so many things that I was doing um, 
that I think actually helped me be a designer more than the actual schooling part. Mm -hmm. I mean, for school, I did do computer science and math, um, and the that part does help me from like a process standpoint and like the things you learn in terms of development, the things you learn in terms of having the resume to get through the door because you have some programming background or you have some math background or whatnot. But I also like think about the things that I had done outside of school even, which was like I was making maps for the Quake community, right? I was I was running the Counter-Strike uh, CPL leagues for Warcraft 3 and Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was running that. I was doing a bunch of guild leading content. I was obsessed with having little meetups for mm -hmm. um, like Halo tournaments. And so there was a bunch of that stuff that I think actually contributed more to understanding how to manage human beings, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like I have this joke and we talk about this with like the managers at work and how my favorite managers are the ones who've been guild leaders mm -hmm. because in, in games, you people don't you don't pay pe like people aren't working for you and you're still trying to convince them to follow you, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so it teaches a lot, you a lot of skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of negotiation, in terms of like vision setting, in terms of like communicating, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a lot of the job. But then there's also just do you do you have an do you have a lot of experience playing games? And there's some of that that's like the there's some of that that's like inherently we have a lot of biases for people who play a lot of games. And certainly I like. I was a very competitive gamer, and so I have a little bit of that bias, right? But even still, like I think the most important skill set for any designer is this real curiosity to understand how another person feels, mm -hmm. right? And so when I see people who are angry at a part of the game, or like, or they hate a certain part of a movie, I'm like, why? Tell me why. <laughs> I want to understand what you're thinking, right? And so, because you're always no cho no no choice that you ever make in a game is ever going to be good for everybody, and so you're constantly making decisions that are like a decision tree for pros and cons for certain types of people all the way through. Um, I love that way as well that game designers can lead you in certain directions and lead you and just the tools at your disposal yeah. to give people those feelings. Yeah. Like, have you played Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to spoil the game, but you know what? The game's, <laughs> like, the game's like 10 years old now, so you can deal. The war 10 years old? No, is it really? So, or something like that. Oh it's actually gosh. really old. But yeah. like, you know, the way, actually, I don't, I don't really know how to tell a spoiler about telling the whole story, yeah. but the way it communicates a story through the controls. Yes, yes. And, like, that big twist at the end where, again, you feel it through the controls, yep. that's an yep. amazing bit of the to of yep. your toolkit to yep. use to yep. kind of give people that yep. feel. Yep. Or, I, actually, another a different example, and this is all, definitely a spoiler, but, again, Red Dead Redemption is 10 years old. Um, <laughs> oh, like, my gosh, uh, it is. The, um, the end of the game where you kind of... Before the final battle, yep. where you go back to doing really simple tasks again, yep. like you're farming, or, yep. and it's really boring. Yeah, the and you emotional lows and highs that they really yeah, put you like through. You, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I remember like one of my actually a guy who now works here. We were talking about we're like, and he's like, yeah, I'm at this bit. It's really boring. I don't know. I did yeah. all these great missions. I beat the bad guy. Now I'm just like herding cattle. What's yep. up with that? And yep. it's just it's this it's the lull to set yep. you up for the storm at the yep. end. Yep. Like that's great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's a. There's a lot of people who I would describe, I think, more for, at least our, in our studio, like the narrative designers really think a lot about that kind of pacing, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And there's pacing from all sorts, from the meta standpoint, and the pacing just, you know, in the micro game, in terms of how weapons feel and whatnot, so. Which is something yeah. which Destiny does yeah. really, really, really well. I'm yeah. just checking this comment. Pokemon guy says, uh, so by the way, Julian said that is truly mind-blowing. Now she wants to make games. Can you make games after you finish the cards for today? Thank you. What? Wait, what? No. <laughs> so Juliana is someone who works uh -huh. outside so much. So now she wants to make games. Oh. I, go do that, but maybe not right now. Um, Pokemon Go guy says the same. If you follow the advice of everyone, then there's no game. Yes. Um, yes. Let's just fire this up. So what... Um, what is this? You played a little game. bit. <laughs> well, I just fired the stupid from scratch. Um, What's your favorite Mario? This one? Oh. Odyssey? Was this? I think it might be Odyssey. Again, Odyssey. Uh, Od this Odyssey Galaxy are in yeah. a whole other level. Yeah. Like, I, like, yeah. I know I know a lot of people like Super Mario Bros. 3 more. Yeah. But yeah. I grew up with this. Yeah. So yeah. I have, I'm biased towards yeah. it. Yeah. And I love this overworld. Oh my gosh, yes. I love this too. I love like... Um, oh, so that was the... Oh yeah, they were life training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was useful when you had siblings because yeah. you know, they died and you yeah. had to help them out. I'll go this way, you can go the other way. Um, 
So, uh, you know, I love, I love, like Mar Super Mario Brothers is the first game I played because I'm a console guy. Mm -hmm. So, I'm I've always been into this type of games, these games, and just playing these. Um, but you know what? One thing's interesting about back in the day was, um, you know, okay, it's, it's kind of obvious, and with the SNES Classic like lineup, it's kind of obvious like the games that they have on it, and they're they're these are the good games, right? But I'm also kind of fascinated in in those days before we knew what games were good or not, and we just kind of had to rely on just getting whatever we could. Yep. The, the kind experience of, of oh, well, you didn't have blockbusters here. But no, we didn't. Have yeah, like, how, yeah. How did how did people play games here? I mean, they just. I mean, there was a lot of piracy. Oh yeah. So yeah. Okay, yeah. things were cheaper. Yeah. But there was a lot of piracy. Yeah. But I remember. Um, but it's it's kind of those kind of averagey games which people really liked back in the day because they kind of could yeah. uh, because they didn't they didn't know any better. And for me, like. My sister's favorite game was Toe Jam and Earl. Did you ever play that? <laughs> yep. That yep. game was weird, and I've tried to replay it. It's not very good. <laughs> but that's kind of all we had yep. back in the day, right? I haven't, I haven't played that one in a long time, so I have no idea. Yeah, it's really funny when you play games that still hold up. Like mm -hmm. I have a yearly ritual of playing Chrono Trigger every year. Like I played around oh, yeah. winter time, and I, it just still, it's still really good to me, and which is really funny for me because I don't. These days, I don't play a lot of single-player games. I play a lot more just online multiplayer games in terms of time. Mm -hmm. um, but I still play that one. Right? <laughs> I still play that one every year. What we so like I said, what what sort of weird offbeat games did you and your brothers like really like that maybe that you look back today and you're like, that's really not a good game. Why did we re <laughs> why were we really into that? Um. So back then, because we didn't have a lot of money growing up, we actually played a lot of things that had never-ending experiences. Right. Mm. So. Um, we played a lot of sports games. So, like, NHL 94 was, like, <laughs> a big, like, debate. It would be, all right, who's going to take out the trash? We're playing a game of NHL 94. And we'd do that for an hour, and it's like, okay, whoever lost. But then we'd have all these, I don't know how much you knew about NHL 94, but there was, oh, like, the wraparound problem. And so there was, like, fights that would break out <laughs> in our family because people were like, you said you weren't going to do that, right? <laughs> and so... So I have a I, lot of memories around that game. I actually just streamed NHL 94 <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago, but I'm really bad at it. Yeah. So I lost like 8-1. Yeah. Uh, but in fairness, I was playing a Canadian. Yeah, so yeah. Like, was yeah. Uh, just to recap, we're here with Emmy Chung, a special guest. She is a game designer at Bungie, and she's just playing retro games and just yes. talking about game design. Yeah. And talking about old memories and old yes. games like NHL 94, yeah. um, which, of course, was famously not the one where yes. you could make Gretzky's head bleed. That's right. That That's was right. 93. Yep. yep. Um, but, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, there were, we didn't play a lot of quirky games because it was trying to find the games on the shelf that were, because it, we were either going to purchase games that were going to be long lived games because mm -hmm. we had to make it last, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, or we would rent them at Blockbuster for the weekend and that's all we get. I mean, I have this funny memory of Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is probably my favorite Zelda. Um, that game is so cool. And part of the reason why it's my favorite is explicitly the memory that I have of. The first three weekends that it came out, we rented it and we would play it and savor it, and we thought that, like the whole light world and the 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 Dark pearls, world. the pearls oh. that you would get um, from the first three dungeons, we were like trying to not get all those things, and we were trying to solve all the problems. And then by the time we got to Sunday night when we had to go and return it before our school, we would uh, we would never get to the first Ganondorf fight, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Um, by the third time, we finally beat it, and then it was like a Sunday night, and then <laughs> right, and we land right in the dark world, and the dark world music starts, and we were like, there's and we, there's another game, <laughs> there's another game, right? And there's so, another game, and it's even longer yeah, than the first game. Long, yeah, there's another game, and so my brother and I were like, we're getting this for Christmas because that we could only get one game, right? And so that was an unusual game for us to get because we would normally get a sports game. Um, <laughs> but that's that, so. But it's funny that like those kind of weird triggers would cause that memory. That that doesn't ex that experience doesn't happen today, right? Which no, and and it's funny because one you could like flick onto one of them. Oh yeah, sorry. So I have turn. I have a similar one with this game because so you know we didn't have video game magazines here. We did; they were in Chinese. No, I don't read Chinese. Yeah. So um, we I'm couldn't trying to remember how how, how everything. No, works. yeah, the apples. Do, Yoshi can only eat them. I can't remember. Is it B or oh? So Y is run. B is <laughs> B is jump and A is that weird like split jump. Is holding what's the uh, Y Y is hold okay. Y to run yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we uh, 
we, we so you know this game has 96 stages and this, you mm -hmm. gotta find all 96 and we were stuck on like my friends and I had a race to get to um, we were at 19 we had a race to get the last stages I went to the states I found a book that found the 96th stage the one <laughs> in the ghost house I remember like um you know, we called some of our, some of my, our, our family back in Hong Kong and I grabbed the phone from my grandmother. I'm like, hey, put him on. I know where the 96 stage is. I know where it is. <laughs> They're like, you're wasting a long distance yep. on this. No, it's, yeah. it's worth it. Yep. <laughs> um, that was my first EGM, funnily enough. Um, just, by the way, sorry. Liz, did you go to CMU? I did. Uh, they have a friend in the, They have a friend who may have gone to the same program at CMU. He studied yeah. entertainment industry management at CMU. It seemed like the coolest program. He'd always tell us the coolest stories. Yeah, it was a. It was a. It's a very unique program. Um, and Arvad says the link to the past story is amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, like those trick, those those memories. Yeah. Like that's, again, that's. I know this game, technically, Super Mario Brothers Three is probably the better game. But that's why I kind of gravitate towards yeah, this one. Yeah, and favorite is not the same thing as best design, mm -hmm. right? That's why, because it's so much contextual about where you're, exp what you're experiencing in your life at the time, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, I mean, I might like lose credibility in the community by saying this, but like, Star Wars Galaxies was one of my most impactful games of my life, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if it would, I would call it as the best design game. <laughs> Sorry, Raf <Ralph> Custer. <laughs> but like, there was just so much I got out of it, and I, it has a, such a special place in my heart as a result. And so I would describe it as one of my favorite games. Not necessarily like best designed, right? But again, like it depends on what you're going for mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Well, I mean, diff the great thing about games, different games, different hooks, different people. Yeah, right? yeah. And like for me, one of the reasons I'm so drawn to Breath of the Wild is I love the. Um, I love exploring worlds. Yeah. I mean, I got yeah. that from this game, yeah. right? And yeah. Breath of the Wild's world to me is so compelling. Yeah. And just being sucked in there and just that whole loop of like, what's around the next building? What's around the next yes. building is is awesome. I love it. Um, the, oh, the stage is... It's funny how yeah, quickly it ramps up in this game. I, I'm trying to remember things in this game. Um, so did you play? Did you play Super Mario World at the yeah. time, right? So that was one of the first yeah. games. You, so you had a Super Nintendo. Yes. So it probably came with it, right? Yes. Yeah. Because again, packing games. Well, not not although, a thing like, here. We, at some point, my brother figured out how to. Oh my gosh, I almost. Yeah, that was really that close. Jump. <laughs> Forgot. There's so many mechanics. I'm like forgetting that's happening. It's amazing. I always loved that um, thing about the first Super Mario Brothers and the tutorial. The way it's laid out like a tutorial without you ever realizing it's a tutorial, right? right. Like, uh, you're going to jump here and you're going to hit the brick ac accidentally. Yep. You have to jump to avoid the Goomba, which teaches yep. you the jump button. It's what Nintendo's king at, right? Yeah. And it's just, it's funny looking at today from that, from our more learned perspective of like, oh, that's why that's laid out that way. Um, yeah, but I, it's funny how, like, so quickly this game ramps up into, <laughs> oh, yeah, here's some difficult jumps. Deal with it. <laughs> You what played the other one. I don't one. remember what that is. Oh, wait. oh, yeah. I think that just. I think that gives you. I think it gives you a really good item if you need a really good oh, item. Oh, I need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed one earlier. Yeah, compulsion, right? Yeah. You, have to, you have to collect everything. Yeah. <laughs> you like, can't not collect it. Um, the music in this game is insane. Ken Kudaragi, the sound chip, the right? Music, yeah, it's. I mean, it's also just like how music is a trigger for memory as well. And so every stage having very specific music, <laughs> Yoshi coming in and the music and percussion changing. Mm -hmm. like. Well, yeah, the percussion changing was yeah. mind-blowing at was, the time. It like, was. Games can do that? Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know, the sound chip in the Super Nintendo is actually made by Sony. And it was designed by a person Sony called Ken Kuroragi, who is the who is the father of the PlayStation. Uh, so back in the days when Sony and Nintendo were mm -hmm. friends and not... Well, now I guess they're frenemies, right? They're not really yeah. enemies. Yeah, and I think I think Koji Kondo did all the composition mm. for this as well. He does all the Mario stuff. Um, yeah, I pretty much just listen to Mario music. At work. Yeah, <laughs> or just video game music. At work. I mean, there's something about, and Long this is gonna like reveal some of my bias too, which is like music for me. I love when music can make you remember a scene, right? So if you can recall music and then say that's from that part mm -hmm. of the game, then I that oh. that that is like what I look for, right? It's like, wow, I can remember that part. I remember where I was. I remember what stage that was, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of a really good... 
of like a really good track that kind of brings that back. But I know what you mean. I think Zelda is really good for that. Yep. Like even um, like the Mega Man series, the oh, yeah. right just. Actually, yeah, Zelda I've, does a great job of that. That first bit of Mega yep. Man X when you first pop in yep. with the, like yep. the ruined, um, the ruined like city. That's great. Yeah. I love that bit. Um, yeah, it's amazing how like all these little things just add up, right? Yep. And pixel art's always fun too. Yeah, and I, I always yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised. I think that someone's brought this up. Like we've had such a nice um, pixel arts come back really strong. Yep. But we haven't seen like that early PlayStation One low poly look come back yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah. it, I think it kind of could work. It could the same way that pixel art isn't a hundred percent authentic to the era. I'm sure you could make it look like it without being without having too many of the limitations. Yeah. I'd have to think about how we would make it work, but I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Um. Oh, and this also blew my mind. Like. Oh shoot. Like I'm an idiot. Well, there you go. You go. Let's also be my like they, they can climb on walls. We can climb on walls. How does that work? Don't forget you can um you can knock him, you can punch him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, that was oh, a yeah. we can punch. Yeah. Him. How does that work? Oh, no, of course. We forgot the biggest one for music. Our badge just reminded us. Metroid. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, you can jump on their heads when they're on that side of the. Oh, and this was crazy. Like oh, the, the, the swapping. The, Whoop. How does that work? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we were so like impressed by so many things back then. <laughs> and there's also like the magic of, of the magic of, uh, of Nintendo that I really enjoy, which is just how um, they don't need to embrace realism, mm -hmm. but like the world is very consistent. Mm -hmm. And so, oh God. I don't remember if I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a pattern yeah, there's a, to it, right? Yeah. I don't but I can't remember what the like forward, back, forward, back. I think I could do this. I think you can just barely do it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm, okay. Ah, uh, patterns. I don't remember how this boss works. Am I supposed uh, to, am I yeah, supposed you're supposed to, to knock him, him off. No, you're supposed to just while it while it's it's always gonna go the direction that's sloping. So uh, wait till it slopes away that's favorable, and then like uh, right, right. I'm like, how does this work? Is this the three punch <laughs> version? No. In every Mario, that's no, uh, that's the next boss. This one. There you go. There you go. Now he's yeah. As soon as it slopes away, which is which he's leaning more towards, you can just knock him that way. And of course, the steeper the slope, the further he's gonna get knocked. No. Because again, wow, rotation. Objects can rotate. No! I, go! Go die! Oh. <laughs> god, this is... Oh, oh god! <laughs> Lu Luigi got... Luigi got Luigi. So, do I start from your checkpoint, or do I gotta... Mm, I don't know. I don't remember. Yes, I do start from your checkpoint. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is co-op, right? Yeah. So, I think you can also use the the flower to do it, but I don't know how you use the flower to do it. And we think yeah, you're going first. I can remember, so I can look at the pattern and remember the pattern again, which I think was hug the wall. Yeah. Come on, come on. Just go, just go, go, go. Door, door, door. There we go. As soon as you're at the earliest part of the world, the door you can go. <laughs> I'll just wait for you to. Yeah, so funny. I had like re I had not remembered that this one had a. This one had. Not the th you hit them three times. On That's the, the, yeah. the next boss. That's the next one. Yeah, yeah. And there's only like three different types of boss yeah. in this game, right? Um, Josh somewhere is going. Like, it's because you knew it. Because you played it. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, these cutscenes, which again back then we had cutscenes. Yeah. So the funny thing is, for us here, you know, you grew up in the states, so you yeah. could actually read this. We couldn't read it because it was in Japanese. Oh and so yeah. That's why some games were totally opaque to us. Yeah. So like, I had Metal Gear. Yeah. But I was six. Yeah. And without telling me stealth, a six-year-old doesn't know what stealth oh is. Oh my gosh, of course. So I just played Metal Gear and died over and over and over and over again. It was like, this game just sucks. <laughs> yeah, localization is one of those things that I think finally people in Western development mm -hmm. really realizing how important localization is. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think it's it's one of those, like, unless you experience it and feel it, you don't understand how important it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, why isn't low poly back back? 
Yeah. Talking about, it sounds so yeah. bad. I hate it for brand new Zelda yeah. game, like Ocarina. Well, it wouldn't be like those games. It would kind of be like, it would be uh, indie games, usually. Yeah. Indie games, you try for that sort of aesthetic. Yeah. Um, what are you playing now that you really like? Now what I'm really like. Other than Destiny, which you... Uh, which, yeah, you know, I play Destiny um, for work and... Oh, I forgot this stage. Well, that's that's the beauty about, about making a game that you really like. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was... The funny thing is, one of the things that I remember talking about with the studio was I was so excited about how um, Bungie gave me a way to play a game, make a game that I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And that was like... I think I was talking to you about this earlier. One of my friends was saying the thing that he loves about Destiny is the um, he loves it's replaced like seeing his friends for a drink at the pub <laughs> uh, because they're all like they all oh that was a nice duck. Um, Gosh, so, I'm like so struggling what with talking to you <laughs> and playing this game. I lost Yoshi. I'm really sad. I'm sorry. Well, he'll come back. Yeah. He'll come back. <laughs> um, my sisters used to call the charging chucks um, Joe Montana <laughs> because we had Joe Montana sports talk football. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only NFL yeah. player they'd ever heard of. So between that and oh, it looks like an NFL player. Oh, it's Joe Montana. I think that's Yoshi. Yeah, good memory. That's so weird. Well, this is my favorite game. Yeah. So, or was. Uh, uh, yes, I totally get, meant that. You can get him. You can get him. <laughs> the, you can get him. The cape twirl always gets him. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, the cape yeah. twirl is way overpowered. But that's good. Um. What were you asking me? Sorry, I'm so distracted. I was. I was oh shoot! Uh, the the, the yeah. goal was in sight. Yeah. The goal was in yeah. sight. It's fine. I was asking you about. Um, what am I playing now? Yeah. What do yeah. you? Um. So the funny thing is, I'm playing D and D again, <laughs> which is fascinating because I haven't played in so many years. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's it's been a way for me to connect with old friends of mine, and we play on Roll Twenty mm -hmm. uh, online. Um, and so that's been the game that we play every week. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I try to make sure I play everything that's like popular, so Fortnite and, mm -hmm. and PUBG. But honestly, the game that I feel like I still would describe as I'm really deeply into, even mm -hmm. though I haven't actually played in so many months, is Dota 2. Um, and I, I, because I like watch it and I'm like part of that community. So you're um, big into esports as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's um, like how I got into games. Was by like that organizing yeah, for, yeah. for esports. Yeah. Um, and it's fascinating because we have been trying to do more esports and trying to cover esports yeah. more. But the thing is, I have to rely on my team for that because as much as I like video games, I like playing video games, I like seeing video games, and all yeah. that stuff, I haven't been able to get into esports. Yeah. I don't know why. I think it might be because a lot of the esports are games which I don't play. Yeah, and I mean, uh, so it sounds like you really care about op like the adventure, open world, the experience of. of well, also as a console, exploring. as a console gamer, there aren't. There haven't been as many console That's focus. True. Um, That's true. Yeah. Because like then you know the yeah, few yeah. sports I do watch are fighting games. Yeah. Um, oh right, right. Because yep. Evo Evo is tons of fun. Yep. Um, yep. Oh wait, there's a secret here. Where's the secret? The secret is it's up. Up. Yeah, but where's up, the? Up. I think. Do I need? No, you I You have to take that, that up I with you. I think, I think you can just fly up there, right? I think there is a. There's a. A vine, vine. on the fourth one. But we but can you just, can just no, fly. No, I don't want to just fly. Yeah. I want to just fly. Let's just fly. Yeah. Why, why use the vine when you can yeah. fly, right? So I used to do this back in the day. Yes! yes! <laughs> is this the first star stage, or is this a just a... It might be a... No, I think it's a... Uh, uh, oh, it's the, the brick. thing the Yeah, side. yeah, the brick. D&D, <laughs> &D, like tabletop. Yeah, you meant the tabletop. D &D. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. tabletop, but it's digital. Digital. Because we're, <laughs> we're not playing actually physically in front of everyone. Oh, you get like a million coins now. Oh, yes. Hooray, not a million coins. Coins that I can't do anything with, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, well that's that's the funny thing yeah. about like, I love that like they kind of oh no not like uh, you just get light oh, oh what um, that's embarrassing <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna but um uh, so Arvad says I grew up away from online community and multiplayer I love narrative and immersion and my favorite mm -hmm. games don't really feel social like The Last of Us yeah. or Silent Hill yeah do you have any soft spot for single players how do you feel social plays a role with single player games oh I mean so so. As a child, I played a lot of single-player games, and so Chrono Trigger is my favorite mm -hmm. narrative. I don't know if people would actually I, describe I it as a narrative game, but um, yeah. See, not as a. Oh no! Where did it go? <laughs> like, where did it go? Um, I can't believe I got twi twice there. Uh, sorry, you were saying the Chrono Trigger and narrative games? Yeah, and so I, I have a really special place for. 
games that tell a unique story that can only be told in games, right? Mm -hmm. That games is the preferential medium for it versus like film or books, for example. Um, well, like Red Dead, where again, yeah, it, it, like there's a lot of player agency yeah. in it, and so I, you know, having worked on two very, very story storytelling based games with Tomb Raider and Bioshock, right? Like. Mm -hmm having work on games that not necessarily are for me, but really delving into why do people care about universes like mm -hmm. that. And I really learned to respect sort of the fandom that comes around the world building side. And so even if it's not a social game within the game, it is an incredibly social game outside of the game because people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. right? And that's the fascinating part when there's a deep fandom that comes around, right? And so would you classify something like, say, Red Dead 2 in that way, where yeah. even though right now multiplayer hasn't been turned on, yeah. you're just seeing clips spread yes. everywhere yes. of, exactly. like me, people riding their horse into a tree. Exactly. Over exactly. and over and over again. <laughs> over and over and over exactly. again. Exactly. Because ultimately we are social creatures, and maybe playing it in-game as multiplayer may not be your flavor of social that you care about, we still do want to share our experiences with other people. And it just means more, right? When you can have a shared common interest and stuff. And so the water cooler moments matter, the the being able to share clips with one another because it feels like it's part of your identity really matters. And so uh, all that stuff is important. And the games that tell really unique stories or have worlds that are very different from our world are the ones that are interesting to me because they tell stories that you know, it's harder to tell in, in a, film about mm -hmm. humans, for example, right? So I want to back up and actually talk about Destiny in that sense, yeah. and the social sense. Yeah. Um, the first Destiny, because you work yeah. on the first Destiny, yeah, right? Yeah, as well, yeah. How difficult was that to come up with that? Because there wasn't, there wasn't a paradigm for what Destiny was. <laughs> how difficult was it to kind of come up with that it's social, but it's also kind of, it's also a, you can also do it single player, but yeah. it's also a very social experience, I mean, and was there any like magic moment where you're like, oh my god, this works? It's funny, right? Like, the the at some point, I hope a bunch of the people who worked on the team with with me, like all, the, someone writes a book about it because <laughs> it was not easy. It was not an easy process because there were so many very different people with very competing goals. And I think it showed in the product, right? But there were a lot of people who wanted different things out of it. And at the same time, it was the reason why it became the way it did. It had a little bit of everything. And so it's sort of its draw and it's not, mm -hmm. and it's curse in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Was stealing live stream. Oh my gosh, what? I, was, I, was, <laughs> I, didn't, I hit a button and started stealing live stream. Um, but we had so many arguments in the studio about what the priority should be. Whether mm -hmm. it should be more cinematic and or whether it needs to be more MMOE or what it's need, whether it needed to be more, you know, shard based loot shooter, right? Mm -hmm. there, there were so many different arguments across the board. We made the choices that we did at the end of the day. Um, whether they were the right choices or not, it's hard to really ever. I think that, I thought was really interesting. Was it was really hard to, in the previews, I couldn't tell what Destiny was. <laughs> but not not I'm like I just people couldn't seem to describe yeah. it. But then when you played it and you had that moment where you intersected with another like you know because your level yeah, paths yeah, always yeah. like intersect with other yeah. like teams yeah. and you kind of intersect on a battle that other people were in. You're like yeah, whoa yeah. Like, there that, are other people doing things here. That was the experience that I had playing multi-user dungeons, mm -hmm. right? Like after playing text-based adventures and realizing like oh there are other real human beings that feeling of like, holy crap, there's someone in my universe. Like MMO players playing Destiny are like, this is very elementary <laughs> guys. Like I've done this for years, right? In the, MMO, in the MMO world. But we knew that there were a bunch of people who, you know, maybe predominantly came from a console audience or only did, done like single player shooters before that we wanted to capture that feeling again for some people who have never experienced it, mm -hmm. right? And so that was sort of the kernel that Jason, who was our creative director at the time, like really wanted to capture um, was the magic of seeing coming over the crest and seeing a human. And, and also it's good for people like me, con mostly console yeah. guys who, I know that they ported some MMOs to console like DC Universe online, yeah, yeah. That, but they were still very PC-ish yeah. and it was very hard for console gamers to get in, but with yeah. Destiny was a console game. I yes, know you have PC, yes. but it's, yeah, a, it's a very, very console game. That's Again, true. it's that feel, like I loved the feel of like the scout rifle yeah. and just like popping headshots yeah, and just yeah. like that. Like that gameplay loop, like I said, you having yeah. it doesn't surprise me that you had like thirty to forty people working on it because yeah. it was just. I love the immediacy of like you pick it up and you know, oh, this is fun. Yeah, this yeah. Is fun. <laughs> yep. Um, and that's you know, I know that there were some struggles with content in the early days of Destiny, yeah, yeah. but that's always what kind of drove it through. What for me, what drove it through was like, I have fun doing that. Yeah. For me, why why I stopped playing was that I actually don't really like playing with other people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a very I, common thing. You know, we. I, well, I only like playing with yeah. my friends. Yeah. And my friends don't play that many games. Yeah. At best, we play Mario Kart. Yeah. Now. 
Yeah. Um, so that's one of the reasons. That's okay. I, yeah. You know? But also, like, um, we had some really serious Destiny guilds, like, at my last job. <laughs> the problem was, like, yeah. I worked until, like, yeah. I le- worked until 11 p.m. because yeah. my shift was later and their shift was So I get like, hey, guys, you ready to put... No, you already... Yeah, you're there's, already- that's <laughs> the thing that we've always talked about, how do we solve, because that's the thing in every online experience is no matter what, as long as you put another human in the game, people will always opt for efficiency mm-hmm. and optimization instead of, like, what might be fun to you. Like, just in, th- in terms of thinking in terms of, like, combos, for example, if you like doing a certain combo that's fun to you because you really like doing punching and that's mm-hmm. like your thing it's pretty inefficient to do it in a game that's with if you have another human being who is even going to tell you that you're being an idiot <laughs> it it changes the way you play where whereas like you know i'm playing slay the spire right mm-hmm. and it's different because you can sort of play your own combos and play your deck the way you want to even if it's a little bit inefficient you're just like i want to see if i could do it or just thinking about the days of Diablo 2 trying to do I'm going to do an all I'm going to do a golem run right mm-hmm. like let's see if I can how far I can get that kind of experience is really hard in a really online universe because there are constantly people who are telling you that you're playing incorrectly mm-hmm. and so people get forced to playing efficient all the time which mm-hmm. changes the way that we have to design because of that right this is a very human behavior thing uh, I have another question here I think um, one is that someone's Chrono Trigger, is that an RPG? Um, is that a JRPG? Yes, it is a JRPG. Um, I found Bioshock very scary. Can't play for long since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, like, all, all, like the big the big brothers, right? Big yeah. brothers? Big brothers. Yeah. Like, uh, big daddies. Like, big daddies. Yeah. Big daddies. Yeah, yeah that's it. Big, yeah. big daddy, little sister. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big daddies coming around the corner. Oh, man. Like, when <laughs> you, you hear them stomping, you're like... <gasps> yeah. Um, that's really... Arvaz, it's really insightful. Definitely social is part of the human experience. Follow up. What's an example from your experience where that played a design role? Like in Bioshock, were you working on a social design team? No, uh, on Bioshock, I was actually working on systems. So economy, weapons, Mm -hmm. um, UX, UI. Back then when there were like only, you know, less than 40 people working on it. So we had to work on lots of different things. And so Mm -hmm. we couldn't hit the quality bar. I mean, that's the thing that's kind of amazing when I think about Halo, because the original Halo team was, I think, 45. And for them to get that feel with probably one or two, three people was like, really insane. And considering they'd started making it as an RTS. Yes. For Mac. Yes. Yeah. And then it became a console shooter. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a crazy, yeah. that's a crazy pivot. Yeah. Um, we're here with Emmy Chung, designer from Bungie. We'll give a few more minutes and we'll wrap it up. Yeah, but yeah. We'll, um, let me see the next one. Cinemax are great for games, but social is what people, what key people in the games is Nami God. In one case study, we learned how WoW is using social interaction to make people stay within the game, making raids that cannot be solo. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, Destiny, yeah, Destiny instance, has raids can't be can't soloed. Be soloed yeah. um, but actually, I'm going to bring up a completely different raid. Yeah. The only raiding that I ever do yeah. is Pokemon Go. Yeah. And yeah. it's really funny, actually, because the dynamics in players between yeah. different places. And in, it, in, in person, it's mm-hmm. totally different, right? But in Hong Kong, when you play... So Pokemon Go is insanely popular here. Yeah. There's loads of players all the time yeah. playing. Like, there's a big gym downstairs. Okay. If you see a bunch of people, like, crowding around, they're playing Pokemon yeah. Go. But... What's really funny is here in Asia, at Pokemon Go gyms, people don't talk to each other. They're just yeah, They're just well, kind I mean, of on their phones just having like... That is how it is in Not in the state. Well, no, because in the states when I go to Pokemon Go raids, they're like, all right, who's in this raid? All right, oh, is really? Courtney? I'm like, don't talk. Don't, are, we, are we talking? I, <laughs> I, I, can, I, can I just tap? <laughs> it's really weird seeing that like, social yeah. dynamic play out yeah. in different ways. Um, but I like that. I think in Destiny 2, right, you have that feature where if... I'm solo and I don't have anyone to go on a raid yeah. with. I can kind of go on a guided raid yes, with. Yes, yeah. I can join another yeah. team, right? Yes. That's that was I was so happy with that. It was huge because I was like, I'm never gonna go on a raid. There's all this content that people keep talking about. That yeah. It's really cool and really awesome. And like yeah. Luke Smith keeps gushing about how great these raids are. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. but I can never play these raids. Yeah, know. there's a. There's <laughs> but like, that's great that you added that. Yeah, there's a lot of. Again, it's all trade-offs, mm-hmm. right? And so, when we talked a lot about what's the right thing to do. We ultimately wanted to create an experience where people would develop friendships with mm-hmm. others, right? And so when you have to make a choice about like, man, humans have this weird tendency that when they don't need each other, they tend to other them or they tend to uh, not try to not, they tend to just think of them as like, oh, we're just strangers, so we're never going to see each other again. It's just like a phenomena that people can't remember. They don't put people's faces into their heads when when you know that you're never gonna see them again. And so there's just like a lot of studies around that, right? So when we talked about 
How, what are the different mechanics that actually forces some... How do I pay attention to another human being? Mm -hmm. right? Just even that concept. Like, how do I even care that another <laughs> person exists? Right? Uh, we... That was like some of the early calls, and then you're like, how do we actually, what, what does that mean? Holy crap, that means that we're going to make it so that it's really hard for people who don't want to do it, right? And so how do we create that password? Mm -hmm. And admittedly, we're so far away from everything we want to do, right? Because like, we care, about, yeah. we care about people who don't have friends who can, who who raid. It's just like, again, trade-offs with every other mm -hmm. mechanic that you're building in the game, all the features that we want to build. Like, because, you know, the yeah. thing, I, but I also appreciate seeing a well done raid done in the well timed like yeah, teamwork. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that like that's very difficult for a solo person just yeah, joining yeah. a random team to right. pull off. Right. I'm gonna give a last call for questions guys. So yeah. if you want some questions, ask them now. Otherwise we're gonna um otherwise I'm gonna end a bit. So your last chance for questions is now I'm what I'm watching <laughs> you. I'm watching you. Um I'm fascinated by the Pokemon thing. I'm gonna have to go look <laughs> uh, like there's a bunch of us here in the office that are yeah, also yeah. really like hardcore about yeah. it. Because What does hardcore like, Pokemon go mean to you? What does that oh, mean? Uh, okay. I'm not even that hardcore. Yeah. So I went to like an. So they have these. They call them EX raids, which yeah. most raids are open to everyone. You can see them on the map. You can go and join, do whatever. But they're these special tier of raids. Which I don't like because the you have to get invited to them, and the invite system is totally opaque. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, so people the system invites you. Yeah. 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 People have worked out a sort of formula, but it's yeah, never yeah. a definite thing. Yeah. But and I'm just. I'm just like Pokemon Go. I find is a really accessible game yeah, in a yeah. good way. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I play it. My wife. Play it. We yeah, all yeah. play. You know, we yeah. all. You don't have to be an expert to play it. Yeah. But this, you have to be an expert to do. Yeah. I don't really like that. But yeah. is it expert in the sense of like you need to put a lot of time in? Or you need expert to put, in the sense you have like a, a specific skill set. Expert in time in because you got to figure out yeah. the formula for okay. It's something like you have to raid at certain gyms at certain uh -huh. times in a certain order to kind of not in a certain order. It's not that definite. You got to raid certain gyms and that kind of puts you in a pool for invites. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta, you know, some are more popular than others. Yeah. And all. So, someone here got finally got one uh -huh. pass, and he could share the pass. Uh -huh. So, I went, and it was great. The thing yeah. was, we're there. You know, there's one pass between the two of us. I've got one phone. He's got one phone. And I look over, and like everyone else has a minimum of two phones. Uh -huh. More an average. Oh, of that's three. hardcore. Yeah. So they're playing. <laughs> they're playing at once. And one guy, for one Mo guy had Mo seven. Oh, nice. He had seven like different. He had <laughs> six phones and one iPad laid out. Yeah. And so he's like. He's playing them all seven at the same time. And then when he was done, I saw him log out of every account on every phone and log, and into, log into another account. He had 14 He's doing it right. accounts. <laughs> and we were like, what oh, is this? Yeah. I appreciate that person. Oh, I do too. And also it was good because we were watching and we we're like, you know, we always try to get like super excellent throws, but yeah. this guy was just hitting like average throws yeah. and catching them all. And we're like, oh, okay, well, average throws are easier to nail. So it actually makes sense. And it's good, and we've seen, we're literally yeah. seeing him catch a whole bunch. All right, cool. Our tactics are not terrible, but we did feel like total noobs because we're like, yeah, we have one. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to grab all of my friends. And yeah, and like, like yeah. I, I could bring a second phone just to show off. But yeah, yeah no, it was, it was, and like here, there's tons of like, there's a guy in Taiwan. There's a grant. There's, I think, the South China Morning Post, yeah. our parent company, has yeah. a video of a grandf uh, grandfather or uncle in Taiwan. Yeah playing on 15 phones at once. He has this harness Amazing. that has all the phones Amazing. in front of his bike. Amazing. So he can just go. I respect these people. <laughs> I, I do too, but I'm also like, and I love Pokemon Go. And I don't mean this in the set, like, what are you doing? But I'm like, yeah. but what would you do with 14 sets? Of, yeah. That, that's the, the thing. The real question is like, why? Mm. Right? But, yeah, but, but the thing is, because, yeah. you know, we, we get it. Yeah. We're both we're both game. I'd like, I'd, I don't like the woman. It's like, ugh, why would you? Because I still get yeah, that. Yeah. Like, why would you play that game? Ugh. Yeah, I, I don't mean yeah. that in its derogatory way. Yeah. I'm like, why? Yeah, why no, like, is this exciting to you? Because I want to understand. Yeah, I want to yeah. know. I want to know yeah. why you need 14 copies of. Well, why you feel yeah. you need 14 copies of Deoxys. Yeah. Cool if you really yeah. think you do, but just curious. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really curious. Yeah, like, like, you know, is it so satisfying to have that many? Uh, efficiency loops mm -hmm. and so that makes them happy like i just curious is he like every person is different right sending it to his friends yeah. is he like trading with everyone yeah, yeah i really really wanted to know that yeah um i'm just looking at a uh, <laughs> the last question is do you like you mentioned k-pop do you like bts <laughs> so i that would be a little creepy for me because of my age now i mean like <laughs> some of the k-pop that i really like were in the 90s so um i really i'm fascinated by bts because again like k-pop when i was listening to it was so inaccessible <laughs> that anybody who was listening to k-pop at the time 
were, there was some sort of like street cred around it. And I, but it was also really uh, elitist, like for anybody who liked K-pop at the time. And so like games in some way, it's like it become really more accessible. Mm -hmm. So I'm super appreciative of how K-pop as a culture and me being Korean, you know, have that mm -hmm. pride, right? And so excited to see <laughs> them be on the billboards and whatnot. Someone else says, I bet, I bet she likes Big Bang. Big Bang still, see, I'm still older than that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going like older. Uh, it's not creepy. I've seen yeah. all ages at concerts, six to sixty. All right. Okay. <laughs> I love. I love that was the last question. That yeah. was great. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much yeah, for joining us. Really, for really happy that you stopped yeah. by. Yeah. Feel free to stop by again next yeah. time you're in Hong Kong. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, well, you guys are based in Seattle, right? Yes. Yes. Direct flights from here to Seattle. Soon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, all great. Right. Coming over anytime. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Liz, uh, I'm sorry, Liz. Emmy Chung from yes. Bungie. Sorry. Everyone it's okay. keep, everyone's calling you Liz in the chat, which is why I keep saying that. Yeah. Um, Emmy Chung from Bungie joining us here to talk games and game design. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again next week. Now, here's the awkward bit because yeah, I have to go you have leave. To, yeah, 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 you know, it's like, it's like those home videos yeah. where you see them go, hi, but see, mom. And the then funny thing is they intentionally <laughs> edit, keep that edit in as opposed to cutting it off. I don't actually <laughs> understand that. Okay, now we're Bye. really stopping. Bye. <laughs>